invented the sport? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. I've heard different stories. Uh, it was Hoyle Swatcher, wasn't it? I don't know. Who was it? Leonardo da Vinci, did he invent windsurfing? So now you're asking me if someone else invented windsurfing? Uh, I've seen pictures, uh, I'm not sure if it was in Waikiki or somewhere, of a person with a sail on a board, but I think they were laying on it and it didn't have the universal, and I think that was the main component to windsurfing that differentiated it from sailing. So uh, to the best of my knowledge, Hoyle Swartz is obviously the one that, that really took the ball and ran with it, but I think Jim Drake was involved in the universal design. I think he, did he patent it? I don't know, did he patent it? With as much controversy as civil rights, war and the death penalty, there are several claims to the invention of sailboarding, commonly known by its more popular name, windsurfing. There are three basic concepts that led to the development of windsurfing. The core concept of mounting a sail on a surfboard came first. Many credit Waikiki surfer Tom Blake in 1940 with doing this, though the Polynesians could have done it earlier. Everyone from Fred Flintstone to Tom Sawyer has claimed the concept of standing on a board and holding the wind in your hands. Those from England claim it was a young boy, Peter Chilvers, whom in 1958 at the age of 12 made a crude object of cloth and broomsticks plopped on top of a plank. The Aussies claim to have dreamed up windsurfer-like creations made from steel tubs as early as 1946, yet no concrete evidence of any of these crafts exist. Then came the invention of the articulated universal joint, allowing one to stand up and steer the craft by tilting the sail fore and aft. And finally, the use of a wishbone boom with a triangular-shaped rig mounted on a board one could go crazy with. The crux of the free sail system is the universal joint. It was in 1965 that the first person came up with this novel idea, a creative man from Pennsylvania named Newman Darby. It was quite a bit like uh, the windsurfer in its basic principles, except that the sail was like a kite, a cross piece. And the sailor had his back to the sail and kind of leaned against it. And it, it seemed to work pretty well. And of course, you know, when they had this freestyle competitions and so on, people would do that with the regular windsurfing sails. Sold in kits, the Derby boards were more aimed for people to have easy access to going sailing, like Boy Scouts, rather than the Tarzans of Jaws and Hua Keeper. It was advertised in Popular Science, Boy's Life, and even given away on the price is right. However, the idea was never marketed to trade shows or promoted through regattas in the way of modern windsurfing. A fire burned the first factory and a hurricane flood took out the rest, sending the whole shebang down the river to rest in Huckleberry's garden. A couple of years later in 1967, two men on the other side of the country in California put their heads together and came up with a sailboard design of their own. These men were, of course, Jim Drake, an aeronautical engineer, and Hoyle Schweitzer. What was, what was different was they, they used a wishbone boom and a Marconi rig. It was a design concept that was better than, that was better than Darby's. Darby didn't get there. Darby had nothing to do with the wishbone boom. That was, that was the greatest step forward was the wishbone boom. I know that Jim and Hoyle were friends and that Hoyle brought the surfing side and Jim the sailing side, they thought, wouldn't we put the two together? That'd be a neat invention. There were several longboard prototypes for the original windsurfer, most designed by Hoyle, shaped by Gary Seaman. Once the final design was selected, it would become a matter of manufacturing the board at a cost and later at a pace that would contribute to the growth of the sport. For this, rotor-molded boards made of alathon plastic were manufactured. At $385, one received a full rig and board, complete with skeg, daggerboard, and a monthly windsurfer newsletter put out by Diane Schweitzer that enrolled you in the least expensive yachting fraternity in the world. I mean, Hoyle did an amazing thing with the sport and taking that concept and throwing his life savings into it and his passion and you know, risking it all to try and turn it into something commercially viable that people would actually buy. And he pulled it off, which was really neat. 
Hoyle developed it, ran with it, and put it on the map and is responsible for the way we see it today. There's no question. If he hadn't done it, somebody else would have. Would it have been Darby? Probably not. However, inventor, he's the inventor. And according to the Smithsonian, he's the inventor. The sport of, of windsurfing is the sport, what we do on the water. The invention of the thing and the unit that was used to catapult the sport to this day, I have no idea. But who took that thing and made it what it is today and made, made the joy and the lives and, and the class, the windsurfer class, because that's where everything was birthed from. There wasn't anything before the windsurfer class. So who invented the sport? It was Hoyle and Diane Schweitzer. End of story. The first attempt at modern windsurfing was a difficult one. Not having an instructional manual, Drake struggled to keep the board from heading into the wind and spilling him into the water. As most people who have tried it know, even with an instructor, the first go can be quite calamitous. The next attempt was made by Hoyle Schweitzer, who added an uphole rope to the mix, utilized to get the sail up and out of the water. Once they were up and going, a whole new world of wind and water evolved. I know the first successful windsurfing was done at Malibu, and that was with uh, my father and a guy named Alan Parducci and Gary Seaman. We would go down to the beach right at the foot of the cliff here and try to launch it through the uh, shore break. They had to drag the board out through the waves to lift up the sail because back in those days, the Universal was on top of the dagger board and get out far enough so that we'd have a chance to get the rig up and be sailing before it drifted back into the shore break. The first boards were called Baja boards. They didn't have a name for it yet. It wasn't called the windsurfer yet because they always experimented with them in, in Baja, California. It was a funny group of people. They were. Mavericks. They were people who were not uh, afraid of making the fools of themselves. People thought we were crazy. They'd look at them, they didn't know what they were. I mean, we were all the Johnny Appleseeds of that, all 15, 20, 100 of us that began. We were, we were spreading the word. It was a big happy family. We went everywhere. Jim, consumed with an aeronautical career, would later sell his half of the patent to the Schweitzers for $36,000. The Schweitzers would invest and sacrifice everything they owned to create a company called Windsurfing International, which spawned the culture of one design windsurfing. In that day, having a level playing field on the race course was good for the sport. It spawned more friendships than competitive fire. For years, it would be a social family affair, more of a barbecue than a race. Before bootstraps and all that, windsurfing was like a family, just a family sport. So it used to be that it was a small kind of grassroots thing and people would go to race, but they would also go because it was just a, a, um, a subculture, you know, like a subculture of, of a community of people. The sport grew very slowly at first, and then a few pilots from Germany and Holland began to discover the sport in California, taking containers of boards back to Europe with them. It was Matt Schweitzer and Mike Waltz, the Swartek sisters, and Lisa Parducci that enticed a more youthful bunch to try the sport of windsurfing. People came out of the woodwork, from all walks of life, from all parts of the world, to try the new sport. Europe was crazy. I mean, they're Everybody had a board on their car, and I don't know if they ever took them off, but it was the cool thing to do. I walked along the little sidearm of the Danube where people go and sail their little sailboats, and I saw two people sailing on the windsurf, and I will never forget that because it's still like yesterday. <laughs> 